So we'll uh, try this again. Uh, good evening. Uh, welcome to uh, Nation on Fire. My name is Jeff Lewis, uh, co-founder and national director of Patriot Coalition. And this is our weekly webinar where we go into details and show you the documents um, that uh, confirm what we're, we're telling you about. So you can uh, research, your, research it yourself. Um, you can find us at PatriotCoalition.com, which has links to several of our projects uh, on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and there's all links to the, all of those on the left side bar at Patriot Coalition. Uh, <clears throat> if you weren't with us last week, um, we went into some detail about the hypocrisy of the St. Common Paris attacks as it relates to how the media and the, the government um, have been addressing it. Uh, tonight, uh, Article 5 update. Uh, Richard, our, uh, Richard Fry, our general counsel, is here. Um, is your mic working, Richard? I hope it is. All right. Let me check. <clears throat> so uh, let me get out of here and get back to the PDF document. <clears throat> I was showing uh, on our, our home page uh, the uh, video for the debate that Richard and I did in uh, Phoenix in November um, on our YouTube channels here, here to the left. Patriot Watchdog World Patriot Coalition in the Article 5 playlist. Um, you also see the debate that Richard did with uh, Michael Ferris at uh, Chantilly with the RPV Advance uh, event uh, in December. And while we were there, we also went to the Assembly of State Legislatures, uh, round three of the Mount Vernon Assembly. And <clears throat> one of the things on uh, the Assembly of State, and we've talked about this before, uh, some of you may or may not have seen it before, uh, the uh, Assembly of State Legislatures, uh, uh, right on their homepage, uh, <clears throat> says that they're not going to be influenced by outside yeah, outside influences. No outside organizations are allowed to be involved in any way. And yet that's not what we're seeing. Um, and most of the attention has been given to the Convention of States project. Uh, I think they're a little more uh, better funded and are, are in uh, the eyes of many uh, the, the main threat to triggering a convention. <laughs> um, from the NGO uh, category. Um, the, uh, I suggest that the Compact for America uh, is probably the, the bigger threat. And they're all uh, you know, working together to the extent that and they're all trying to, to trigger an Article 5 convention. Um, <clears throat> the uh, concurrent, pull it up here. The, because this is an interstate compact, uh, and since there's no outside organizations allowed, uh, the place you find this being promoted uh, was ALEC. And this is just the latest version of it because they've been promoting this for years. This is some of that model legislation that uh, ALEC pushes out year, year in, year out at these state legislators. Uh, there's some you should read the whole thing, and uh, if I don't have your email address, if you uh, uh, I'll show you my email address in the, the end credits. Uh, send me a, send me an email, and I'll add you to the 
the, the post show uh, email that will have a link to where those documents are. So you can just download the PDFs. But in order to satisfy the compact clause in the Constitution, Congress has to pass a resolution. In that resolution, they pretty much uh, cede Congress's authority under the call in Article 5, Congress shall call. To the NGO to Compact for America, because as you as you come down through here and read this, uh, the <clears throat> and this is the substantive statute or resolution rather, um, in accordance with the terms and conditions of the Compact for America. Insert Compact for America language here. And this is legislation or you know, resolution, congressional action. But it's not a compact that goes into effect when two states join. Because Congress doesn't approve the compact until they get these from three-fourths of the, of the states. Not two-thirds, three-fourths. And if you look at the resolution, what it's approving is a specific amendment with specific amendment language. And that language is the balanced budget amendment language as produced by the Compact for America. Until Congress receives a certified conforming copy of the balanced budget from the chair of the convention organized under the Compact for America or the Compact Administrator of the Compact for America. So they're not just jockeying to trigger a convention to have a discussion about a balanced budget amendment. Uh, what, what they are endeavoring to do uh, it goes beyond that. And if you look at um, <clears throat> the uh, FAQs they put out, this is the uh, Nick Dronius, one of the people Richard and I had uh, debated uh, back before he left to go, we must become the, 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 the face of Comeback for America. Uh, he was with the Goldwater Institute. Uh, uh, Sean Krauser, the other uh, proponent of Article 5 uh, that we debated heads up this uh, American Academy. Now, <clears throat> these are NGOs uh, who are uh, ALEC and the Compact for America. Um, collaborating to put forth resolution to Congress to give them, the NGO, authority over an Article 5 convention and the language of the amendment that would be the only thing that that convention could consider. And one of the... And, and if you look at the language of the actual compact that the state legislatures would have to pass, that may be in, yeah. So this is their balanced budget amendment. Um, legislation, I guess, um, for state legislatures to adopt <laughs> uh, 
along with the delegate controlling um, resolution, this one, the limitations on authority from delegates to a convention for proposing amendments. And all this was sourced at ballot. If you pause, pause the screen, you can you can see the exact uh, link right there uh, for that one as well. <coughs> now, the Assembly of State Legislatures documents. Let's see. Yeah, this one here, which is titled Compact for America Balanced Budget Amendment, also, also from ALEC. And there's that link. This is another one I can attach. So then when you, you look at all of these documents to see how the Compact for America and what they're proposing, both to the state legislatures and to Congress, and then look at the Assembly of State Legislatures and their bylaws and rules, well, well they're, they're essentially a mirror of each other. And the, the <clears throat> suspicion is, especially if you watch the video at, at T-SPAN, I may have it, let's see if I can pull that up. Richard, is your mic working? Uh, I believe it is working, but uh, I'm not able to get signed into the site. Okay. Um, you've been listening to what I've been saying, right? Trying to. Um, uh, do you have any comments or advice? Um, on uh, what you think people need to be doing to address this? Uh, the Article 5 movement in general? Yes. Uh, well, number one, they need to get educated uh, about uh, exactly what it is, what the history is, who's behind it, uh, and they need to do some critical thinking. Um, you know, the only question they really need to ask themselves to, to determine whether or not this is a good idea is to, to determine in their mind whether or not rewriting the Constitution is going to make a bunch of politicians who've been violating their oath to support the Constitution and been violating the Constitution to all of a sudden make them obey the Constitution. And even the pro-constitutional rewriters uh, admit, uh, and I think Ferris implicitly and uh, some of their state directors expressly indicate that uh, it won't, that it's going to have to be enforced best as it would have to be enforced for the current one. So if that's the case, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, no, it does not. I uh, found the link uh, to the C-SPAN video. Uh, You can't download this, I don't believe. Uh, 
can favorite it. And it because you know, odds are you're not going to want to watch it all in one setting because it's four hours and 53 minutes long. <clears throat> um, so it's important that you understand because everybody you see in this uh, in, on the stage and um, in the seat are legislators. And as we all know, legislators don't always do uh, uh, what's in the people's best interest. But you need to contact your uh, your state rep, your state senator. Uh, remind them that you elected them to uphold the Constitution, not to uh, what's that word, Richard? Uh, collaborate. Uh, yeah. Uh, with special interest groups and uh, uh, billionaires um, to change the foundation of our, our and structure of our government. It's insane. And, of course, Mike Ferris himself says that's exactly what we want to do, is change the structure. He says it's not, and we have a video of this that he's put out an ad uh, where he says it's, it's not a personnel problem, it's a structural problem. But, of course, they define the problem as the federal public servants not following the Constitution. That certainly sounds like a personnel problem to me. <laughs> Uh, uh, true, and uh, if you uh, <clears throat> if you if you talk to him or his people, they they absolutely uh, revere uh, the Constitution. So they can't they can't change it fast enough. Well. I guess that's like George Bush. He loved the free market system, but he had to violate it to save it, right? <laughs> Absolutely. I guess we only hurt the people we love. <laughs> um, Richard had written... Uh, why rewriting the Constitution by any means will not restore the Republic. You know, rewriting our Constitution to solve the ills of the Republic, no matter no matter if through congressional or convention, uh, proposed amendments will not work because it is the wrong solution for the wrong problem. Those promoting the rewriting of our Constitution say we need to do such to rein in an out of control federal government. And that's a, one that violates the Constitution. But this misidentifies the problem in two ways. Firstly, it's not simply the federal government that's violating the Constitution and our liberty. It's the state governments as well. In fact, the state governments are being corroborating, collaborating, and complicit with the federal government in violating the Constitution for at least 100 years, and the states have been willing participants. The federal, central, State governments are su supposed to be counterbalanced to each other, not partners in crime. The state governments violate the Constitution every time they take mystical federal dollars from the federal government, which the federal government does not have the constitutional authority to offer, such as for education, welfare, environment, health care, etc. The extent of this corroboration is revealed by the fact that most state budgets are comprised of 30 to 45 percent federal dollars. <laughs> That's what's reading again. The extent of this corroboration is revealed by the fact that most state budgets are comprised of 30 to 45 percent federal dollars. The federal government has been bribing the states to undermine our liberty and illegally expand its power for a century. Pro-Constitution rewriters 
are now telling us the states will liberate us from Article 5 or through an Article 5 convention. That's like asking Frank James to watch over Jesse James. Secondly, the reason the governments are out of control has nothing to do with the wording of the Constitution, but, but the fact we the people have not been honoring our patriotic and moral duty to hold our public servants accountable to their oath to support and know the Constitution. That is the real solution to the problem of the Republic. How can we enforce the Constitution, etc., when we ourselves do not know the Constitution and the other principles of the Republic? Such liberty, such as the American concept of sovereignty and American federalism. These are the principles that have made America the most free and prosperous nation in the history of mankind. They are gifts from our God. Many complain that we have taken God out of our schools. Yet very few complain that we have taken the principles of our liberty out of our schools. Our God will survive, will, will survive not being in the public schools. Recall we have not always had public schools, but if we do not teach the principles of our liberty, which are based on Judeo-Christian principles, our liberty cannot last. Without our liberty, we will end up being like the Christians of ancient Rome, poor and hiding in the shadows to worship our God. And that is where we will deserve to be. Proposing to rewrite our Constitution because corrupt and ignorant politicians will not follow it is like rewriting the Ten Commandments because people will not follow them. Rewriting the Ten Commandments will not turn sinners into saints, and rewriting the Constitution will not turn corrupt politicians into statesmen. Defend, not amend, the Constitution. And and he kept it to one page. Well, that's a miracle in and of itself, isn't it? Yeah, but you yeah you, you, you did sum it up. Um, I mean, Billy, in the first the, the first sentence, it's the wrong solution for the wrong problem. Then we could we could talk till the sun comes up about all the minutia and details of the the process of an Article 5 uh, convention. A proposing convention or an amendment or a ratification convention, either one. And it can be an interesting debate and discussion, but it's irrelevant and moot to what we need to know to make a decision as to whether or not amending the Constitution will solve our problem. When they pass things like the indefinite detention provisions, sections 1021 and 1022 of the 2012 NDAA, it violates over or authorizes the violation of over half the Bill of Rights. And we don't do anything about it. We don't vote the people out of office that voted for it. We don't even chastise them. Don't even send them a strongly worded email. That's how lazy we've become. As a, as a people, and we, as we people treat them. That, I, we we want to treat our public ser- servants like they're our public rulers. In case you have uh, have, have forgotten it, and you can get this, uh, I'm showing you here at the, at this link, and each one of these are sourced out. And we're gonna we're gonna do a show on the, on this uh, probably next week on our uh, America's Development Highway uh, project. Uh, because it, 
the, the, the facts are not apparently enough for people to make a decision. When the co-founder of this project, Mark Meckler, also co-founder of Two Party Patriots, said at the ConCon Con, the conference on which is ConConCon.org, arm um, arm and arm with Mark Lessig, progressive uh, uh, law professor. Says, I'm not sure we need to amend it at all. Why did you launch a project to amend it? <laughs> Money. Um, and here's what Richard was talking about. Because uh, what uh, Michael Thurston said, because sometimes what you need is not a change in personnel, you need a change in structure. Well, that's a YouTube video from the launch of the Convention of States project. Um, <clears throat> their staff council, uh, which they've been calling their application limited, um, finally uh, admitted it in the New York town back uh, last March. Convention, another convention state council um, who doesn't like to uh, uh, be on camera talking about this issue and actually refuses to allow uh, our presentations to be videotaped. Uh, it is such an important message. I would think you would, uh, you would welcome people wanting to share it. Uh, there are uh, now, now former communications director, Jordan Sellers, last January said, I think the majority of Americans are too lazy to elect honest politicians. But I think some men and women could be found who are morally and intellectually capable of rewriting the Constitution. Well, this may be true, but they won't be on the short list of people considered to be delegates at any such convention. And we don't need to be rewriting the Constitution. We have to rewrite it to find out what's in it. Hey, how's that work, that force, counselor? Not too good, I don't don't think. <laughs> Their former executive director uh, acknowledged in a debate that uh, Richard and I did with him in Raleigh last uh, April, I believe it was. Um, <clears throat> Uh, that he had made this statement the previous October prior to coming on board with the Convention of States Project as their executive director. That some, and not without justification, fear this approach as too radical and too fraught with risk. Their concerns are rational. If we embark on this journey, we cannot be certain of the outcome. Well, we can be certain of what we have on paper now, which is what they're supposed to be upholding. Another one, uh, another attorney that's in their uh, hierarchy, um, uh, David Snyder, the Kansas director, uh, who Richard also debated. Someone asked him, uh, what, "What's going to stop him from to the president from ignoring new amendments?" Uh, his response: um, uh, "It's a problem that we're going to face, no matter if we go down our road or not." Uh, Gary Lyons, the North Carolina uh, director for Convention of States, uh, well, when he was asked, if we change the Constitution, what makes you think uh, they'd obey their oath? His response, there's no guarantee that they would. So you don't know what's going to be in it. You don't know that they'll uh, they'll follow it. <clears throat> And lastly, uh, and, and these are cons uh, 
alleged conservatives. Uh, Chris Kobach, Kansas Secretary of State, said if you, if you ask a liberal, he'll say, what is the convention? What's Article 5? Because we conservatives are the only ones that care about the Constitution. <clears throat> well, there's, there's more activity of conservatives trying to trigger a convention. Well, they care about the Constitution, all right, because it's, it's in their way. That sounds uh, crass, perhaps, but it's, it, it's the truth. Now, from the last Lawrence Lessig, the rest of the law professor at Harvard, said openly, it is time to rewrite our Constitution. He co-hosted with Mark Meckler that con con con. But Cenk Uygur, the Turkish foreign Sunni Muslim founder of Young Turks, and Wolfpack, which he launched at Occupy uh, Wall Street, had as many, or depending on who you, who you ask, more state applications adopted. It's at Vermont, Illinois, California. Um, working on probably 25 or more states in this new legislative session that's just beginning. Said we want to occupy the states to demand that the states call for a constitutional convention. We named it Wolfpack because we're coming for them. Uh, this is linked to uh, a video where you can Watch it yourself. Uh, we're not just pulling this stuff out of the hat. Uh, Professor Lessig and T Party Patriots co founder uh, chaired that conference. What I had in there. Most states have a, a limited uh, window, and it could be two months, four months, uh, maybe as much as six months. And they don't all start at the same time, but there's some that only meet every other year. So if your state legislature is, is meeting this year, uh, especially if they're one of those that starts uh, that starts their business up in January, and it's January 20th, you need to reach out to them uh, and tell them just say no. And if, if you need more information uh, uh, to give them, uh, send them to our YouTube, uh, to our Article 5 playlist on YouTube, either Patriot Watchdog or Patriot Coalition. And have them watch this webinar. This is the the uh, Article 5 PowerPoint. Uh, it takes about an hour and a half to, to go through it, but it's a, a, a video of the PowerPoint presentation being given. It goes through the history. It goes through the Article 5 process, uh, the responsibilities of the various players, whether it's the Congress, state legislatures, uh, uh, the, the citizenry. Who's funding and, and promoting uh, the convention process uh, uh, currently? Now, there's a ton of information in these videos, and I've got some more coming. Uh,
trying to pull up uh, the project. If you haven't been to our America's Love with Our project, it's about the psychological propaganda that's being used against us. Um, I suggest uh, check out the basics. Gives you a brief overview of of, uh, Salowinski's rules for radicals, uh, a listing of them, a link where you can download the whole book, uh, the Delphi method, Delphi technique, uh, its history. And this one's a biggie. Most people don't, just the name sounds like something boring that you don't want to read or watch. Uh, But this is. Uh, a strategy uh, developed by a Yale law professor. It's very important. Yeah, it, it's only, uh, I want to say maybe 20 minutes. It's that long. Uh, ex- excellent overview of how you're being manipulated. Uh, consensus building and collectivism. Uh, a video there, the 25 rules of disinformation. Uh, and they're all uh, uh, listed here as well. T- ton of information just on the basic tab. And <clears throat> staying on topic, which is tough for me. Um, under resources, videos, uh, Beverly Eekman. Don't get it to go there. Uh, she's an education whistleblower. Education is what we're primarily about at Patriot Coalition. Um, we do other things like legislation and resolutions. But, uh, but, um, you scroll down on her page. She has a six-part uh, presentation on Agent Provocateurs, which gets into giving you real-world Examples of what you've encountered um, in your city council meetings, or your P- your PTA meeting, or your homeowners administration and, uh, association, uh, where agent provocateurs come in and manipulate uh, the, the mindset uh, to achieve a specific objective. Uh, <clears throat> Strongly recommend watching this series. There's also the G. Edward Griffin uh, speaks to um, collectivism and groupthink. Uh, uh, author of The Creature from Jeff Lyman, which is a, a, a link uh, to that book. Uh, as the collectivist conspiracy. Uh, if y'all have heard me uh, uh, reference him before um, with his tennis court analogy, uh, with this left right paradigm, is that uh, the, the tennis player on the left wins sometimes and the tennis player on the right wins sometimes. Uh, the, the ball never wins. And we're the ball. Uh, I got that from this uh, uh, documentary, if you will, on the collectivist, collectivist conspiracy. And that's directly on uh, embedded in his page under resources, videos, you know, where you're, I highly recommend you watch that. Um, <clears throat> And one last document here is coming up on the hour. If you live in North Carolina, um, I call them the Pharisees, uh, Michael Ferris and people that follow him at the convention states. <clears throat> If you know anybody in these churches or you're within uh, driving distance, 
to attend these events. I, I go to them. I'm going to scroll now because there's more. Because uh, he's going to be in North Carolina the 22nd, 23rd, 24th. Um, and all but uh, one of them are churches. We can tell you all day long what our impression and opinion is of what they're proposing. But if you have the opportunity to go hear it yourself, uh, uh, ask ask the tough questions. Um, what makes them think amending it's going to make anybody follow it? And then hold them to that. Take two or three people with you. If he doesn't answer the first one, get the second person to say, look, answer their question. It's a serious question that the people need to, to, to wrap their minds around. Uh, you're making the decision whether the people want uh, to amend the Constitution. Because right now, the people are not having a say in it. And even, even one of the, the strongest uh, proponents, uh, Bill Walker, um, Friends in Article 5 Convention. If you look at the, the uh, white papers that he put out about the Compact for America and Convention of State, and uh, I don't know that any of us have um, challenged Rob Nagelson's ridiculous uh, <clears throat> ideology on Article 5 uh, more than uh, Bill Walker has. Um, including in court. Uh, uh, even the other uh, the other proponents of a more more wider convention such as Bill Walker are uh, questioning the the message and the message, if you will, uh, from the largest uh, pro article five groups out there. Not the kind of people I want in my church or my school. <laughs> Keep them away from the kids. Poison them in their minds. And I had an apple. To make this simple for these documents, and because there's really a lot more of them that I didn't show you, if you go to Alec, if you and just do a search for Article Five, you'll get a whole long list uh, of documents. These are from 2013. The handbook was from 2012. There's there's that Compact for America Vows Budget Amendment document. The legislature united the compact that the state legislatures are signing on to. It's signing away state sovereignty or states' rights to withdraw after a certain number of states are admitted. Alex also been promoting the Madison Amendment. If you haven't read that one, it's a pipe dream, too. And all of these are carrots being dangled uh, by people from as far left as you can imagine to as squeaky to the right as you can fit. They got a carrot for everybody. is that it doesn't matter what other issue you are finding for or against that you're using the Constitution and the Bill of Rights uh, to validate your position um, or your authority or your your, your lawful uh, protections or liberties or whatever um, the category it fits in. <clears throat> 
that's all on the table. Because there's, there's enough diversity amongst the people from the far left to the far right that are trying to, they're all trying to accomplish the, at the same thing to arrive at the same place, which is a con- Article 5 convention. If not a constitutional convention. Because some of them speak to that, that that's the backup plan. Well, if you look at what the state legislatures or the assembly of state legislatures and the Compact for America are proposing the states do, is pass all this legislation about the, how the rules of a convention would be, what the, the constraints on a delegate could be, up to including removal and a charge. Uh, the felony that if they are not successful at triggering an Article 5 convention that Congress wouldn't actually call, then they would already have come to agreement on how they would conduct an actual convention of states. But it wouldn't be under Article 5, and it wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't be. Uh, uh, confining yourselves to the compact clause finally. Be, they would be in, the states would be invoking the declaration understanding of the, the people's inherent right to alter or abolish uh, any government that didn't uh, suit their, their, their needs. But that's what they're attempting to do. We need to stop it. Uh, leave anything out, Counselor? Did you want to, nope, anything I, you like? Um, you, I, think, agree I that, think we just... Go ahead. Would, would you agree that they are positioning themselves so that uh, if they don't get the Article 5 convention, they'll already be 80 yards down you know, they'll already be in the red zone uh, for a state, a, a true state-controlled convention. Well, yeah, I mean, there, there's certainly, and there's been other other experts that have, have cautioned about that, that at some point in time, they, you know, they may uh, try to convert to a constitutional convention, uh, which itself would not be under state control, uh, that would be left in the hands of the delegates themselves, but uh, that is that is a concern. And uh, you know, there are two different uh, two different areas talked about in the uh, Declaration of Independence in terms of modifying the government. One of them is a complete ab- abolishment and rewrite, and the other is an amendment. The Constitution covers the amendment in Article Five; it doesn't cover a complete rewrite. So. That certainly is a concern. And how do we know what scheming people will do? You know, these are basically politicians that are that are telling us we have a broken political process, and they want us to trust the political process to change and fix the political process. It's absurd. The Speaker of the House of the North Carolina General Assembly blocked both resolution and uh, our model legislation um, on uh, the indefinite detention provision. This is a, this is the guy who won't who won't even adopt a resolution and allow it to uh, have a vote. Resolution, which is non-binding, declaring that uh, they need to fix this problem, this law, that's unconstitutional. But just doing that, that that admission, would trigger the duty to interpose, and that. And so th- th- these are the same people that were supposed to entrust to pick the delegates and oversee them at an Article 5 convention 
that they will have some place some value on our unalienable rights. They won't even stand up for them now. It's already written on them. The Bill of Rights. It's the protections of them. You got to grant them. Uh, it's pretty scary, too, because to a very real degree, they themselves have been playing fast and loose with the Constitution. Um, and that that does concern me. Well, the, the article that I was reading by Bill Walker earlier uh, spoke just to, exactly to that. That was his uh, observation as well. And how do you how do you trust the judgment of someone whose recommendation is if somebody's not following the rules, we're going to rewrite the rules? Uh, you know, if uh, you're playing cards and the dealer you catch the dealer dealing from the bottom of the deck, getting a new deck doesn't cure the problem. And if someone's suggesting that we need a new deck, which is what they are doing, these uh, constitutional rewriters, uh, one has to question. Uh, their judgments. Right. I guess this is not showing me what I was uh, looking for. There, there are documents on the main, uh, when I did the main Alex search uh, for Article 5. They go back to 2011, and I know there are others that go back even further. So for the <clears throat> the uh, Finley Estate Legislatures to suggest no outside entities are going to have any involvement in what they're doing. And they're writing the rules for an Article 5 convention. And the legislators themselves won't be the members of the Assembly of State Legislatures. That's why they call it chairs and not legislators. Because when you read the, the bylaws uh, and the rules, the state governments, the member states, are the state legislatures. So it's serious, it's serious business what they're proposing. It's not just a, a, a protest or a rally or a march or a political gamesmanship to help the candidate get elected to stop another one from getting elected. They're looking to do what both President Obama said, uh, fundamentally transform America and Michael Ferris is by far on the other side to the right, at least with his rhetoric, that, that we need to change the structure of our government. I'll, I'll wait a little bit before I send those documents, uh, emails, so if anybody wants to uh, uh, give the direct link uh, to the archive for these documents that I showed you uh, tonight or at, uh, send me an email at jeff at patriotcoalition.com. And if you got any questions for Councilor Fry, um, uh, Article 5 issue or any of the other issues uh, that we address. And uh, she's been a little under the weather. Our uh, political director, uh, Dal Wildman, 
I hope she's back with us next week. And remember that the, the offending life and liberty is the pursuit of happiness.